Well, good morning. Here I am again. <laughs> Both pastors are still unable to come, so I'm up here taking their place again. So I want to welcome everyone here. Thank you all for coming. And I think I have a scripture that is supposed to be coming up. Scripture? It's from 1 Peter. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. What an awesome time of the year this is as we look forward to Easter, our, our most special wonderful day of the year where we remember what Christ did for us, how much he sacrificed for us, and what an opportunity we have. And we just need to remember to be so grateful for everything he did, that we, though we, though we did not see him, though we do not see him now, we know he is there. We know he paid the penalty for us, and we know he prepares a place for us. So we will Start off with Syrian Hallelujah. church who turned 100 on Thursday, March 31st. And so a few of us went to her house. They had a huge display. So that's Dorothy Shirley and one of her caretakers. And she was very happy to see us. Um, I had talked to the, to the caregivers beforehand and um, <clears throat> if people want to go see her, to wish her a happy birthday. They just said phone up and make arrangements because they're trying not to have too many people at any one time because she hasn't been doing that great. Her health has had a little bit of an issue. So, but I mean, she's happy to, happy to have people come visit. Um, uh, Pastor Greg and Pastor Gabriel are both feeling better, but they are still not quite up to coming out to church. They don't want to put any of you guys at risk. And their Pastor Greg is still, seems to be having a fever off and on. But Diana's good and going to be ready to go back to, church, uh, back to teaching on Monday. Um, I see everybody's here, so I'll call up the Sunday school kids if they would all come up. And Cecilia, I will get you to come up and lead them in the song, if you don't mind. Okay, you guys come over here, okay? Come on. People want to see you. Come on over. I'll get you to stand right there. Come on, Joel. Koye. JR, you need to come to the front so, you need, so people can see you. Okay. Okay, JR, come over here, okay? Come over by Dami. Okay, thank you. Okay. I'll let you sing the song. Okay. 
So everyone, um, the song the kids are going to sing for you, we call it the bathing song. Um, um, it's a song about um, different parts of the body, the eyes, the hands, the feet, and how we relate them to God and the greatness of God. Okay? Are we ready, guys? Yes. Are we ready? Yeah. Are we ready? Yeah. yeah. Are we ready? And now for your Bible verse. Don't run away. Okay, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Good job. They always get nervous up here, so I bring them help. You guys can go to Sunday school now.
trust in Jesus just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise and to know the safe Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I trust him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, oh, him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, and in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing blood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how so much. Our scripture reading for today comes from uh, Ephesians chapter 6. As I was um, just going over this yesterday, is it me? Um, I was just reading a little bit about Ephesus. I, I studied it not that long ago in Bible study. And Ephesus was the fourth largest city in the Roman Empire. Uh, Calgary is the fourth largest city in Canada. It was, um, its claim to fame was that it had a temple to the goddess Artemis, who was um, that particular Artemis, was a fertility goddess. She was the most popular deity in Asia at that time. And the temple built to her in Ephesus was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. So Paul was writing to the Ephesians um, to encourage them to stand strong, to resist the occult, to resist the immorality that was in the city. And so he was finishing up his letter in chapter 6 to the Ephesians. And so he finishes saying, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet filled with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whatever I speak, whenever I speak, I may be given the... Whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly 
make known the mystery of the gospel, and may that be true for all of us. Thanks be to God. Um, yesterday began the season of Ramadan for Muslims, and um, there is a prayer guide that's been put out. And the very first country that we are to pray for is Afghanistan. So Saturday we were to pray for um, the people in Afghanistan, that they would be bold to, as Ephesians said, to fearlessly stand against the evil one, to fearlessly preach the gospel. And today's prayer is for um, the Afghans who are in North America. So um, we need to pray for, for those who, are, who have come here from their country. And um, uh, Sandy had some bad news this morning. Uh, her daughter Sarah and her husband Nick lost their baby. Um, and Sarah lost, uh, had a lot of hemorrhage and, and trouble too, so we're going to be lifting them up. So I am going to go ahead and, and um, lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that you, are, that you are here with us, first of all, that you are working in our lives and that you call us to be fearless in presenting your gospel. Because, Lord, we know what you did. We're coming up to that most holy of celebrations, that time when you took our sins and you died. But death did not have the victory. You rose again. And you are alive. And we have that blessed hope that when we die, we will go to be with you. That we will, that we do have an eternity. We have an eternal home with you. And we are so grateful for that, Lord. And we are so looking forward to that celebration day of Easter. Lord, we pray for the Muslims. We know that there has been um, so many so many Muslims have come to Christ in the last 40 years. And we just thank you that you are doing a great work among them. We pray for the people in Afghanistan. We pray that you would help them to be, to be bold, to trust you, and to have that peace in the midst of the persecution that they face. It is not an easy life. It is not an easy time. And we pray that you would help them to, to stand firm, and Lord, we pray for the people who have come to North America, for those who have come to Canada, to Calgary. Lord, we know that it is a um, huge culture change for them. And Lord, we just pray that there would be um, people that come alongside them to help them. Lord, I pray that Christians would be, would be friends, would would speak about their faith in Christ, would live their lives so that questions would be asked of what makes them different. And Lord, I pray that for all of us for all time, that we would live in such a way that others would notice and ask why we make the choices we do. Lord, help us to be your hands and feet. Help us to be an example to those around us of how you would have us live. Lord, you do call us to be different. You do call us to a higher standard. You call us to, to demonstrate your love, to demonstrate your character to those around us. Lord, I thank you that uh, Gabriel and uh, Greg are feeling better. I pray that you would continue to heal them and that you would enable them to be back with us by next Sunday. I thank you that Diane is feeling so much better. Lord, I pray for Bernie, who is, um, just as she was getting over having broken one foot, she broke the other. And I just pray for, for healing, for a complete restoration so that she can be out to join us again. I thank you, Lord, that Elaine has been able to come home, and, and uh, I just pray that you would help her with her feet, help her with some of the issues that she's dealing with. Be with her, Lord. Give her your peace and joy again. Lord, I pray for Vanessa 
uh, Greg and Diana's daughter. She's been having medical problems since um, the birth of her little boy. I just pray, Lord, that the doctors would would discover what is the what is the problem, that you would keep her safe, that you would help her heart to return to normal, that her uh, heart rate would would return to normal, and that um, whatever has caused these problems would be discovered. And 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 Lord, I just pray that you would heal her. And Lord, I pray for Sarah and Nick in the loss of their little boy. And I pray for Sandy in the loss of her grandchild. Lord, bring Sarah through this and help her to heal quickly. Heal their broken hearts, Lord, in this very, very sad time for them. Lord, we pray for the Christians throughout the world who are suffering persecution, who are facing the loss of their homes, of having their churches burned down, having accusations made against them that throw them into prison or even death. Lord, I just pray that you would help us to remember them, that you would help us to be strong here where we still have the freedom, and that you would help them in the midst of persecution to turn their eyes fully upon you, knowing that there is there is a better place waiting for them. Lord, I pray for the conflicts in the world, especially Russia and Ukraine right now. Lord, there are so many innocent people being harmed. I just pray, Lord, that you would bring rational-minded people to the table who would be willing to um, converse, be willing to offer solutions, and be willing to accept solutions. And Lord, I know that you are over all and in all, that you are watching over this whole thing. And I thank you, Lord, that you know what's going on. We can trust you, even when we don't understand, when we don't see. Because just as we didn't see you and we don't see you now, we know that you are and that you are with us. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time, for this day, for the people gathered here. Help us to honor and serve you in this coming week. In Jesus' name, amen. So there is a special, special music now. Jesus, why me? 
And Jesus said, come to the water, stand by my side. I know you are thirsty, you won't be denied. I felt every tear drop when in darkness you cried. And I strove to remind you that for those tears I died. Jesus, I give you my heart and my soul. I know that without you I'd never be whole. Savior, you've opened all the right doors, and I thank you and praise you from earth's humble shores. Take me, I'm yours. And Jesus said, come to the water, stand by my side. I know you are thirsty, you won't be denied. I felt every tear drop when in darkness you cried. And I strove to remind you that for those tears I died. Um, just while I think of it, there was two things I forgot in the announcements. Uh, one, we are still meeting for prayer on uh, Wednesday nights on Teams. Um, if you'd like to join us, contact Raymond and he can send you a link. Um, also, I've ordered a program called Pray For Me that is, um, it links the younger people with the older people in church. So every young person is to find, uh, to try and find three different generations of people to pray for them to create um, more, more of a family feeling amongst the church because we tend to kind of be in our separate silos when we come to church. The children are downstairs and the youth do their thing and the older people do their thing and, and we don't necessarily speak to one another and know one another. So this is an opportunity for us to pray for one another and support one another. So that is coming. Just a little um, heads up to think about volunteering to be a prayer partner with, some, with somebody else in church. And now... We have um, uh, Dean coming up from, from uh, Jews for Jesus. And so we are excited to hear what he has to present for us. Thank you, Dean. There's some water if you need. So good morning, everyone. It's really, <laughs> it's really nice to be here. It's my first church uh, that on this tour. Uh, and I want to share my personal testimony where I met God. Uh, so my name is Dean Tzareker, and I'm from Israel. Uh, I grew up uh, in an Orthodox family. Uh, I never knew about Jesus. Uh, I know just a little bit of rumors about Christians. Um, and then... At one point in my life, being very religious, my family started to uh, draw away from our Judaism. N not from our Judaism, more from religion. We were less and less religion. And, and so I stopped keeping the Shabbat, if you heard about it. And, and nothing happened. And no lightning was striking me down. Nothing happened. And then I joined the army, as it is mandatory in Israel to join the army at the age of 18. And when I finished my service time, just before I finished my service time, I get this letter from the high rabbinical um, courthouse, 
which concerning everything about Judaism in Israel, and they said, hey, Dean, you might not be a Jew. And for me, it was a shocking thing. <laughs> I never knew anything else but Judaism, and I never saw myself anything else but a Jew. Uh, and then I heard out that my sister and my mother, and all the way till my great-grandma from my mother's side, they all get the same letters saying, you might not be a Jew. And I asked around, why is that? And we went there and to the, to the, um, to the judge, the rabbinic judge, and he said, well, when your brother got married, we have this system, and there was a, a notification that came up and said, your great-grandma declared when she went from Germany to Israel, she declared she's a Christian and not a Jew. And we find out that all of you guys are not Jew. Um, and that's why we declare you're not Jew. And that's it. It's he signed that I'm not a Jew anymore. And we had a perfect explanation for why she said those things. Well, she, uh, um, she was escaping the Nazis in Germany, right? And she fled away Europe, and then she went to Israel before the, um, the foundation of Israel, uh, before 48. And then she thought, if the, the Arab will win Israel, they will kill every Jew, and I didn't run away from Hitler to be killed here. So I'll say I'm Christian, and if the Arab will win, they will throw me back to Europe, and I, and I will live. But we had, to, uh, <laughs> we had to prove it to the rabbinic judge, and he gave us like uh, 90 days, and so my um, sister and aunt flow, uh, fly to, to Europe and try to get uh, information about my great-grandma, that she was a Jew and she lived as a Jew and whatever. But for me, I was devastated. I was not a Jew anymore. <laughs> and I did what every other Israeli does after he finished the mandatory service in the army. I went to South America, to the Hummus Trail, we call it. It's where all the Israeli go around South America and have their time after the, the service. And it was only the first, only the first week, and I, and I was on this lagoon, and I was with my friend, uh, and I told him, Yoni, please go away, and I just need time for myself. And I had this burden upon me that I'm not a Jew anymore, right? And for the first time in my life, I spoke with God. Now, I told you I was a religious guy, but when I say I spoke with God, I really meant speaking with him and asking for him, and not like Santa Claus, uh, asking for good things that he can give to me, right? I don't have this grocery list that, yes, you're God, you're awesome, but I need my bicycle, I need good grades, and I need a girlfriend, that's it. <laughs> I actually spoke to him, and I said, why are you doing this to me? Why uh, do you uh, took me out of your people and throw me you know what blood I have in my veins. I am more Jew than Mordecai the Jew. Why do you do this to me? And then I, I was infuriated of him. And I said, well, maybe I don't need you. Maybe you're, you're not uh, even real. Like my friends in the army said, you're not real. Why do I need to believe? But I always knew he is there. Uh, and I said, so I don't care. Just calm down and, and solve this thing for me. I want you. And at this very moment, I felt something I never felt in my life at the time. And I felt those, those vibes, those waves touching me. And then I heard a voice in my head, but it wasn't my voice. And he's saying, Dean, why are you pursuing me? Why are you coming after me? Don't you see those things you've been uh, experienced are not from me? I'm not the one who's doing this for you? And man, I was afraid. <laughs> uh, my father always told me that if you uh, talk to God, that's a religious thing to do, that's called prayer. But if God talks to you, you went crazy. So uh, he always told me, never accept, like, uh, never uh, tell God to speak with you, because he will and you will go crazy. And I felt crazy at the moment. I never um, heard God before, and I was trembling out of fear. And he noticed it. He noticed my fear. He noticed something is wrong. And he calmed me down. He said, don't worry. And then I felt a very warm hug. And he said, I'm coming to you. And I was in my mind, I was like, I don't know if 
if that's okay, because <laughs> it's it was terrifying. Um, and then I had to walk all the way from this lagoon to my hostel, and I couldn't think like dead silence in my in my brain. And then my friend saw me, Yoni. And he said, Dean, where have you been? I almost called the police. It's my first week here, and I don't know where you've gone, and you don't answer your phone. Where have you been? And I was trying to explain the whole experience, and I was like, ah. nothing came out of my mouth. And I, I took a cold shower. I tried to speak again. Nothing came out of my mouth. So I said to myself, okay, Dean, you're writing your own uh, journal, so write down the experience so you can tell it later on. And the only thing I could write down this, uh, this night was Yeshua, which means Jesus. But as an Israeli guy, I never heard the name Yeshua. I didn't know it was a name. Uh, so I asked my friend uh, the day after, uh, Yoni, that and that happened to me. And I wrote down Yeshua. What does it mean? And my friend Yoni is also an ex-religious guy. And he said, oh, maybe you mean uh, Joshua, Yehoshua. And I said, no, no, it's Yeshua. He said, maybe you mean uh, Yeshua, which means salvation in Hebrew. I say, no, Yoni, I know what I wrote. I wrote Yeshua. He said, Dean, you just come up with a word. You invented something. I don't know. Let's continue with our uh, journey. And so we did, and we did, and we had a fine uh, travel along the, the south of uh, America. And then we come back to Israel, and one day I was at my, um, at my computer, on Facebook, some of you might know it, and there was this post about the most famous Jewish guy on all time who changed the world. And I was like, okay. And I went into this, uh, this video, and they were talking about this guy, and he was healing people. And I said, okay, we have this, um, this uh, rabbi who called Maimonides, or... Um, or um, uh, he called in English, his name is Maimonides or Rambam, and he was a doctor. So I said, maybe it's this guy, right? But they say, you might think it's Rambam, but it's not. And I was like, okay. And then they continue, and they spoke about him being fulfilling the uh, prophecies about Messiah, being a Messiah. And I was like, okay, when I was in South America, I, there is um, Orthodox, ultra-Orthodox people who they think their rabbi is the Messiah. They called Rabbi Milubavitch. And I get to know them very well, and I asked them about, why do you think your rabbi is the Messiah? And they told me. And I thought to myself, maybe it's those guys who think uh, their rabbi is the Messiah. But they said, no, it's not the Rabbi Milubavitch. So who is this guy? And they say, Jesus, you might know him as Jesus, the, the Christian guy. And I was like, oh, no. I, I turned off my computer, and... At the time, my sister and my auntie already made the arrangements, and we were considered Jews back again. And I was like, no way. I, I turned off my computer, and I and stared at the heavens and said, God, why you, did you have to bring the Christian guy again? I thought we are okay. But I never heard those things about Jesus again. Like, again, I never heard about Jesus th this way. So... I was thinking to myself, but I know Christians, right? I know the, the Crusades, I know the Inquisition, I know what they've done to my, to my family, to my people. And I'm going to prove that Jesus invented a new religion or whatever, and I'm going to get the New Testament, and I'm going to read it along with my new, uh, Old Testament, my, with my Tanakh, and I'm going to prove Jesus is wrong. And so I did out of um, angry. I, I was furious. And I get the New Testament, which, by the way, I get it from Jews for Jesus. I didn't know that at the time. And I get the New Testament, and I said to myself, I'm going to read one chapter at a time, and that guy, Jesus, won't confuse me. If I read the whole thing, I might be confused. I'll read it one at a time, and, confer, uh, and, and I'll look up in my uh, Old Testament to see if it's right. And then I opened uh, the New Testament one night, and I feel the presence once again. And I feel him like laying his hand over my shoulder, hugging me and saying, read, it's about me. And I read like crazy. I was, <sighs> and I was in big trouble because I thought I was the only Jew who believes in Jesus. Because no Jewish person would believe in Jesus, right? It's, it's a mandatory thing they led us to believe that Jew, <laughs> Jesus is not for the Jews. 
And I was in a big problem. And I didn't know what to do. And I only prayed the Lord's Prayer every night. And I only had like this talk. But I didn't ask for things he can give me. I only asked for him. That was a big, the first change I have in my spiritual life. And then after a couple of months, the, the guy who sent me the, the New Testament uh, contacted me and said, Hi, Dean, have you had a chance to read the, the New Testament? What do you say? I say, I'm the only one who believes in Jesus. What, what, what am I doing now? And he said, don't worry, you're not the only one. Please, do you want to meet and talk about it? And I said, yes. And then we met and he explained that... Um, it's not that uh, normal to, to believe in, in Jesus and to be Christian, as, uh, as he said. And he said, you know what? You live just next to a congregation or a church. Do you want to go there and try a service? And I said, yes. So he said, can I give your number to a lady there and she will get your number and you'll talk to each other and meet? I said, yes. And then I got her phone. She got my phone. And she said, okay, it's on this street and this time, uh, we will be happy to see you. I said, no problem. I never came. <laughs> Another week passed by and, he said, and she said, uh, are you going to come this, um, this weekend? I said, yes. I never came. So after a couple of those weeks, she said, maybe you're afraid of uh, a large um, um, meeting or something like that. We are something more intimate. It's called a home group. Do you like to visit us? I said, yes. She sent me the address and everything. Uh, and then the day comes and I didn't go. And she said, everything is fine. I said, yes, I have um, university staff and exams. I couldn't. OK, we will pray for your exams. But don't worry, come next week. I said, yes. And I never did. So I went like this for a couple of months. And she never gave up on me. And I was thinking. Who is this lady and why did she care so much about me? And then one day she said, Dean, I don't uh, I invite you anymore, but I invite you to my house at Shabbat's, at Friday's night, to Shabbat's dinner. Are you willing to come? And I said to myself, this woman is crazy. She's not going to give up on me. And she doesn't even know me. And I know if I don't jump on the wagon or on the train now, it will leave the station and I will never be able to, to come so I said, yes, uh, I'm coming. So I went to her house, uh, wonderful dinner. She um, asked, how did I get to faith? Uh, how do I meet Jesus? And then at the end of this uh, night, she said, well, tomorrow we're meeting at the congregation, at um, the church, are you willing to come? And I said to myself, Dean, if you're not jumping on the wagon now, you never do it. And so I did, and I went there, and I just came a few minutes before her, and the service started. And they start with, um, with worship. And it was the first time my heart was expanding. And I was like, ah, this is so beautiful. <laughs> you just sing to God. <laughs> and, and I fell in love at the first moment. And then this one guy, he was from Brazil. And he prayed in Portuguese. And when I was on my big trip, as I told you before, I went to a synagogue in Brazil. And those guys were Jewish. And they prayed in Hebrew. But they didn't understand a word in Hebrew. And I asked him, do you understand what you're praying for? He said, no, but I have to. This is what my tradition says. And this guy is in Israel praying in his own tongue. And I know God will understand him. God will understand every each one of us. And it made so much sense to me. So at that moment, I was a member of the church for a whole year. Uh, so I going uh, relentlessly to the, <laughs> to the uh, church and the, the home group. But one day this pastor came from, um, from the States and he gave a message about forgiveness. And it was divided into forgiveness to others and forgiveness for yourself. And the part for forgiveness for others, I was so relieved that I heard it. Because I had to forgive to some people in my life. But the part for forgiveness for yourself... I didn't like it because I, at this point, up until this point, I never forgave myself for whatever I'd done before I became a believer. A believer, and knowing that now I'm a believer, I didn't thought that I deserve to be with God. So, for me, if everyone would ask me up until this moment, I'll say yes. Jesus is the truth and the life and the way, and you should follow Him. But I know that when my uh, trail here uh, ends, I will not go 
to Jesus because I don't deserve to be with Jesus. And I was okay at the time to not go uh, to Jesus. I didn't know him that well. And I was, I was there hearing about forgiveness to yourself. And I could never forgive uh, to myself. And this lady who invited me relentlessly to, to the congregation and to her house, she said, Dean, I see something is going up with you. Are you care, to sh you care to share it? And I told her just a little bit of things I've done in my past or in my army service. I was an um, interrogator for a terrorist and I'd done many horrible stuff. And I told her not just because of that and many, many more of things I don't believe I, uh, I should get God's uh, forgiveness. And she said, like she heard everything and she said, Dean, do you really believe in God? And I was like, what? I just explained why I don't deserve God's forgiveness. And you ask me all of a sudden about not, um, something else, about me believing in God. Of course I believe in God. I'm here, no? And she said, do you really believe in everything uh, said in the scriptures about God? I said, yes, Tzameret, what is this thing is all about? And she said, Dean, so how come the, uh, don't you get it that he forgave you? And at the moment, I felt the presence of the Lord again. And he touches my heart and, and says, now do you believe it? Now do you understand? And I started crying because I understood that God left everything to forgive this little Dean. And I accept God's uh, forgiveness in my life. And I start to cry. And, and I said, yes, I, I, I understand. I believe that you forgave me. And a month uh, passed by and I got baptized, thank the Lord. And ever since then, I followed the Lord. Um, and a year after that, I, I went to this uh, program called Masa. It's a Jews for Jesus program who gets um, um, people like me, um, uh, young people, to go to the Humus Trail again, to go to India or South America and share the gospel with Israelis who never heard the gospel. And so I was afraid that I will um, scare people instead of bringing them to, to, uh, to Jesus. And, and this Tzamer, the, and the, the woman who invites me, she said, Dean, don't worry. Just before you talk to people, just pray a, little, a quick prayer and let God do the, the work. And he done. Every single time I was preaching the gospel or talking about Jesus, he was there with me, giving me words I didn't know I had in my mind. I didn't know I had those memories, those verses. And all of a sudden, people changed their way when I was speaking with them. And they, they were getting the, the New Testaments to read. And they were keeping in touch with me. And thank God he'd done a lot of things. And ever since then, I joined Jews for Jesus, uh, the organization I'm here, uh, I'm here today by them. And that's, that's it. That's my story. That's how God uh, changed my, my way of life. That's how from, from the moment I, I understand that God forgave me and he forgave every one of us, I, I become a missionary with Jews for Jesus because I want to share the gospel with the fellow people of Israel that have never heard the name Jesus before, that are, they are longing for this Messiah, but they don't know he already came. So that's what I'm doing in Israel uh, very, via many, many um, ministries we're, we're doing. Uh, we lately have founded um, a coffee shop in the University of Tel Aviv where we host uh, events and we share the gospel with the, the incomers of uh, students. And it's going just great. Uh, and people are really eager to hear something that they never thought that is possible. And that's Jesus. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Dean. We really appreciate that. So our next hymn is Jesus Paid It All. I 
had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Oh, no. paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. And when before the throne I stand in him complete, Jesus died my soul to save, my lips shall still repeat. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it. So thank you for being patient with me. Thank you for our singers who did a marvelous job. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>